Hi, this is Wishup, and this is a quick little bonus Lenormand reading for the full moon uh, in Sagittarius, but also kind of covering this cycle of energies. As I've been out and about, um, I notice how intense it is, uh, especially in terms of people kind of feeling on edge. Um, and I think that this is all leading in a very good direction. You know, it's probably not very comfortable if you're a field to get plowed. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it feels like a back rub. But it could feel like getting mauled by a bear. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I had talked about in the other full moon reading, which was all oracle cards, about um, maybe laying low a little bit in terms of putting yourself out in very challenging social situations where judgment is at hand or where you have to prematurely reveal uh, things which are in a very new state um, that kind of keeping your powder dry and keeping close to home and trying to keep very grounded are important things. Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, the full moon is a great time to recharge your crystals if you like working with crystals. But even uh, if you don't use crystals a lot, if you have used them at all or have any of them, now might be a great time just for a little bit, for a few days, to carry a pocket crystal or put one by your desk. An important thing about crystals is their energy tends to be somewhat gentling and calming. Um, and, uh, and I know I'm sort of being very general about that, but a lot of crystals, uh, even if they're used to enhance certain qualities, they're overall calming anyway because they've been around for millions of years, most of them, and they've seen things come and go. They've seen energies like this come and go. So it's like having a very wise older friend tell you, I've seen this before and you're going to get through it. So uh, I think crystals right now could be a really great thing to uh, have around you or anything actually that reminds you of something wise and something old. Um, People talk a lot about, oh, get rid of the old and kick it to the curb. But what I don't hear talked about as much is how much strength we get from being in the presence of people and things that have seen difficult times, like ones that we might be experiencing and have survived it, and how comforting it is just to know that it can be survived and that you can do it too. So uh, I think try to cling to things like that. And I thought I'd do this bonus Lenormand reading. This is with Pixie's Astounding Lenormand, which is a new deck for me, um, which I just love because I'm a Rider Waite fan. So this deck uh, by Edmund Zabrowski, he used uh, Pamela uh, Wait. I'm sorry, Pamela Coleman Smith. Thank you. Pamela Coleman Smith's drawings from the Rider Waite deck and also from other works to create this Lenormand deck. So I just thought I'd ask, besides keeping our heads down and trying to keep our uh, tongues from getting out of hand and realizing that in personal relationships, our closest personal relationships, probably there's going to be a fire up of passions, a fire up of energy, and potentially a focus on um, expressing areas that we think aren't fair or things that we think aren't true or aren't just or even digging up old battles to fight them again. And given that that is the energy, other than just um, absenting ourselves from life, I wanted to know if the Lenormand had any other advice for how to make the most of this full moon. I talked about burying yourself in the things you love, especially your new works, really devoting this hyper energy to that. But let's see what else the Lenormand has to say. So here's the bouquet. For me, the bouquet uh, is also tied with Jupiter. It's a very lucky gift kind of card. Um, maybe this is emphasizing the need to see this energy as a gift, as a good quality, as something that is coming to bring beautiful surprises in your life, not horrible ones. Um, change can always be somewhat disruptive. And when you're trying to change into the new, it can be difficult. And that's kind of what's happening, but it is leading us into a good place. Um, so let's talk about this surprising, expansive uh, energy that we're feeling. We've got the moon. There we go. 
And we've got the dog. Okay. So sorry to be so sniffly. Like I'm having some, you know, little sinus issues too, just to, you know, add to the fun. So the moon is a card of creativity. It is a card of the mind. It is the card of impressions, perceptions. So let's say you worked in an image related field like PR. The moon would be the card for the kinds of things you're producing, impressions and perceptions. It is a card of things which are not real yet. So for example, if you were talking about uh, knowledge that we've learned over time and put in a book, then that would be the book, right? For that kind of learning. The moon can be concepts that maybe aren't solidified yet or imaginative new ideas. It can be innovations. But as I said, it's also perception. So it's like, well, what do we think about things? And that's not always accurate. Sometimes our reflection of what we see is not accurate. It's not well enough illuminated. So this moon seems to be bringing a surprise. But having dog on the other side is really reaffirming to me the need to stay faithful and loyal to what's beautiful, to what's lovely, to what's wonderful. The dog is a card of loyalty, trust, and friendship. So I think it's saying we want to move away from the realm of impressions, especially if you are being affected by other people's perceptions of what your new thing is or you are letting yourself get caught up in worries about that. The moon, because it is a mental card, can represent worries and anxieties about things. Um, it can be those hyperactive thoughts, right? And the bouquet is saying, this is a gift. Whatever this new thing is that you're working on or that's coming, because it's uh, Jupiter will be bringing something, Um you know, Jupiter's a gift that doesn't arrive, or a guest that doesn't arrive empty handed. Um, when the great beneficent turns direct again, he's bringing something. Um, so what you want to do is focus on the gift and not focus on having a bad perception of it, or maybe a bad imagination of what it might be, or a worst case scenario. What you want to focus on is your dream of how great it can be. And you want to be faithful. I think this, I feel like this is faithfulness to yourself, faithfulness to your hopes, faithfulness to your dreams. And it can be difficult to be faithful to yourself when you're feeling a little raw and ragged, just like other people are. Like, how do I maintain my strength? Um, and that's why I was talking about grounding too, just remaining strong in yourself knowing what you love, knowing what you care about, and trying not to be swayed too much by impressions. You know, think of your, your dreams as a gift that are supposed to help carry you through. Um, I also see the dog as a very good card for achievements with other people. So I feel like these, when these more difficult energies sort of move their way through the system, which is going to happen very quickly because the moon moves fast and Jupiter will settle back into its direct motion, you know, within a few days. So we're really talking about maybe a week of a little bit of, ugh, you know, but then things will settle into a faithful, friendly kind of energy. And that's what I, um, I've really been feeling that and seeing that in other people's readings. And I wanted to reaffirm that I know this may not feel exactly like a gift, but I think this is the gift. I think it's happening. I think the change is here, uh, and you may have already made it. And now you're, you're feeling this uh, agitation because there's this fire up of energy in the personal planets, which is typically actually seen as a very propitious time for new beginnings. When the planets are in their homes, this is actually seen as a very good time for new beginnings. So while they're getting there, while they're coming back home, there's this ugh, a little bit of angst and energy on these planetary movements. But once they're there at home, and they are there now, and Jupiter's about to go direct again, and we're having this full moon in Sagittarius, which is in fact about expansion, but it probably is also about um, 
saying a goodbye to things that you've really sort of let go, like really focusing yourself forward and um, thinking about your most idealistic views, your most idealistic future. So as you're doing that, um, I think you need to stay faithful to your dreams. And very soon, this will smooth out into a much friendlier feeling energy. And I think you'll be able to see the gift that you've gotten. The dog is a great card for relationships. And with Jupiter going direct in, in the seventh house, uh, this or direct in Libra, rather, this could be the gift of a new relationship that is long lasting, loyal and wonderful um, for you, which could be a work relationship. It could be a love relationship. It could be a renewal of a family relationship that's been on the outs and now you're able to mend fences. I mean, and that mending of fences could be painful and yet could be so rewarding. When you get to the other side, you think, I really missed this person. And I'm so glad that we're once again able to be important parts of each other's lives. So like I said, this is a, a little bit of an agitated energy, but it looks really good. I think it's going in the right place. And I hope that you can find whatever the best methods that, that you have in your personal bag of tricks to deal with it, because I believe it is bringing blessings for all of us and uh, many blessings to you and rock on with your bad self.